Hi everyone, happy Christmas Eve. I hope you had an amazing time doing praise. Now tonight, during this Christmas Eve service, we are going to take the time to honor Jesus and celebrate his birth. We begin by remembering the reason for the season. Why did Jesus come into this world? Well, he came into this world to save us from the effects of sin. And it all started in the Garden of Eden. After God finished creating the world and the universe, he created Adam and Eve in his own image. Everything was perfect and beautiful. God just had one rule for Adam and Eve to follow. They were not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They could eat from all the other trees except that one. However, there was a serpent in the garden. This serpent convinced both Adam and Eve that it was okay to eat from the forbidden tree. He tricked them into thinking they would be like God. So both Adam and Eve disobeyed God's one rule, which became to be known as the first sin. Now what is sin? Sin is what separates us from God. Because of Adam and Eve's sin, we were all born into sin. We also commit sin when we disobey God's commands, even though his rules are there to help us. Since God is holy and just, sin needs to be punished. We all deserve to be punished for our sins, and the punishment we deserve is death. So, was God disappointed in Adam and Eve? Yes, God was disappointed with them. However, did God still love and care about Adam and Eve? Yes, God still loved and cared for them deeply. He cares deeply for us. And this is why we see the first glimpse of the coming of Jesus when God punishes the serpent in Genesis chapter 3. God tells the serpent that out of the woman's womb, there will be a savior that will crush his head while bruising his heel. We can see that all the way from the beginning of Genesis, God's rescue plan was already in the works. And when we come to the life of Abraham, God made a covenant with him about his children. He said that he will have a descendant that will be a blessing to all the nations. God in this instance was talking about the Messiah, our savior. This Messiah is to be born as a son in the family line of Abraham. When God told Abraham that kings would come from him, he was looking ahead to the kings that would come like Saul and David. And most of all, God was pointing to the greatest king of all, Jesus. In the book of Matthew, Jesus is known as the son of Abraham, thus fulfilling the promise God made with Abraham. The book of Matthew also tells us that Jesus is a descendant of King David. In the book of Isaiah, many years before Jesus' birth, around 700, God revealed to Isaiah that Jesus would reign on David's throne. However, Jesus would rule with righteousness and justice forever. His kingdom has no end. And in the book of Micah, found in the Old Testament, the prophet foretold that Jesus would be born in the small town of Bethlehem, the same town David came from. God told the prophet Isaiah that the promised Messiah would be born in a very special way, that he would be born to a virgin woman through the power of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah continued, noting that Jesus would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah then wrote in chapter 9, verse 6, that for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. In spite of all these good things, Isaiah noted that there were still going to be some people who would reject him. The prophet Jeremiah said that Jesus' life would be in danger when he was born. The prophet Hosea said that Jesus and his family would have to flee to Egypt for a time to escape from danger. And so tonight we are so fortunate to now know that Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies of what was written about his birth. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. And this child, baby Jesus, will grow up to live a perfect and sinless life. And the most important and meaningful prophecy that was fulfilled by Jesus can be found written in Isaiah as well. In chapter 56, 
Isaiah writes that Jesus would be a servant that would suffer for the sins of the world. He would give his life so that anyone who believes in him will be saved from sin. At Christmas, we celebrate the promised gift of salvation given to us by God through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. This is just exactly what we needed for our relationship with God to be restored. The greatest present we will ever receive. This Christmas Eve, we find comfort knowing that Jesus is also called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And speaking of Emmanuel, I got some incredible pictures of the Christmas ornaments some of you made with the theme Emmanuel. And I think I want to see those pictures. Do you want to see them? Great. Let's take a look. Wow, I am so impressed. You are all so talented. I really appreciate how you also shared that Jesus was with you by being your protector, helping you stay positive. He was with you when you were feeling scared. He was with you at school. That is so amazing and warms my heart. And most of all, I'm sure God appreciated what you shared. So great job, everyone. And now let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for tonight, this Christmas Eve, as we remember and thank you for the greatest gift we will ever receive, the gift of your precious son, Jesus. We also thank you that we also now have the gift of salvation through the work Jesus did on the cross for us. We are so grateful that you are always there with us. And we ask that you help us live our lives in a way that honors Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us. We love you so much. And in Jesus' name we pray. All God's children said, Amen. Amen. So God bless you. I love you. And Merry Christmas.